we we hit our first match, and this is absolutely symptomatic of how they were trying to do the new versus the old. Yeah. And how they also didn't get that right. So this is a match between the Nature Boy Buddy Landell and Flying Brian, otherwise known as Brian Pillman. How many Nature Boys have there been? Well, it, do you know what? There have been a few. Um, <laughs> so like Tiger Mask. Yeah. There is the original uh, Nature Boy, who is a guy called Buddy Rogers, who mm. was the first ever WWF champion. And he was one of the first wrestlers who had a brilliant physique. Right. And he was a good looking lad. And mm. he named himself, I think, after Nat King Cole had a big song called Nature Nature Boy. Right. Um, now, Ric Flair, he then became the Nature Boy Ric Flair. He had the bleach blonde hair. Mm. And he had a series of matches with Buddy Rogers, um, sort of almost Battle of the Nature Boys. Um, so it was a big, <laughs> it was a big ridiculous, thing. Right. I know it does. I, but outside of wrestling, coming to it, I now know Nature Boy is quite normal. But it just uh, amuses me the first time I heard Nature you, Boy. You said, it, you said it about four Can't times wait. there. And the first three times, I was like, it does sound normal. The fourth time you said it, I was like, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that fellow who dresses like a Cub Scout and goes out and forages for mushrooms? <laughs> Is this someone in your local area? <laughs> <laughs> is that Trump dressed as Shirley Bassey? Yeah. The guy looks a bit like Ed Balls. What's his name? <laughs> yeah, and he he's, just hangs yeah. out. He just forages. He's on stuff. ITV and he's, yeah. and he's constantly t- trying to show off to me about how he's managed to cook a sausage in <laughs> five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I can do it in 30 minutes. That, that, that's what I think of when I think of Nature Boy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. The, the song itself, I think, is all about... Um, do you know what? I'm not even going to get into it because I did read it, but probably about five years ago. <laughs> and uh, I might be entirely wrong. It might be slang for homosexual. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I'm homosexual Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, that would fit in the, in the clouded kind of 70s way. <laughs> <laughs> woo would be a... He's a real wooer. He's a real say. wooer. He'll, that boy, a real wooer. Yeah. Why, well, you can hear him wooing, wooing around the back of the bar and every Friday night. <laughs> Buddy Landell has come along, and I think, you know, not really any different to, to Ric Flair. He's gone, oh, I like that gimmick, I love it. Yeah. So he's dyed his hair, yes. and he's nature boy Buddy Landell. Buddy Landell is, is let's face it, the least successful of all of the nature, all of the nature, boy nature boys. Men. But there is something mad about putting Buddy Landell on a, on a televised card yeah. with Ric Flair in the the main event <laughs> that's i mean that is madness well, he was using nature boy as well wasn't he yeah at that time so like yeah you, you've got the same sort of gimmick they did actually i think they did have a short program right. buddy landell and rick flair around this time right so in a weird way buddy landell was never going to end up in a program with rick flair yeah unless he had that gimmick of the fact that he was like a knockoff of rick flair <laughs> Worth saying, I, I did actually find out some stuff about Buddy Landell. And one of the things I found out was this year in 1990, he was honoured as the most influential WWF stroke WCW wrestler right. from Kentucky by the state governor. And he was made a Kentucky colonel in 1990. Now, Which sounds very KFC, is it? It, it is. It's exactly what happened with Colonel Sanders. He was a Kentucky colonel. Ah. And being colonel in Kentucky is not a military honour. No. It's basically Basically, if you do something, if you're like a, a leading, Notable. prominent local businessman, right. they will eventually make you a colonel. I mean... Serial killer? <laughs> you <can> be one? <laughs> well, I mean, a serial killer of chickens, yeah. <laughs> um, but the... Um, I just can't help but feel. I know, uh, yeah, sure, he's from Kentucky and everything. I can't help feel they fell for the, well, he's WCW champion. You can see this. <laughs> My friends, when they used to watch wrestling, would be like, oh, did you see Ric Flair lose to, you know, and you'd be like, no, 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 that was Buddy Landell. And they go, no, it was definitely Ric Flair. <laughs> and so kids into wrestling couldn't tell the difference between the two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me tell you, the state of Kentucky has fucked that up. <laughs> Most influential WCW wrestler, 1990, from Kentucky, and they're like, Buddy Landell. And it's like, <laughs> he loses in the opening match of Great American Bash. Right? I mean, it's it just, it, they must have got it wrong. Buddy Landell, big journeyman wrestler during the 80s. Mm. I think he did trade slightly on the fact that people thought he was Ric Flair. Um, <laughs> I think that, was, that goes without saying. Um, but he, he came back to NWA in 1990. Pretty much, this is the early Anderson thing of rewarding people he thought were good workers. Yeah. What this relies on, this is only Anderson bringing in an established regional star who he thinks <laughs> will, by having one of the new guys beat him, mm. it will get the new guy over. You're relying on the old guard to do the job. Yeah. But it's very clear that the audience here, they don't really know who Buddy Landell is. Aye. This is one of his first matches back in the NWA WCW mm. and he gets no reaction and what he does is he takes an established star in Flying Brian who is an up and comer and he has an 11 minute long match with him <laughs> where Brian Pillman does about three moves and Buddy Landell is just getting himself over. Yeah. 
when you put the veterans in the ring with the new people, the veterans all use this as an opportunity to go, I might be losing, but I will look like a million dollars <laughs> while I do so. And they will look like shit. <laughs> so he works the crowd constantly. Mm. He looks like the star. And Brian Pillman spends his whole time either on the floor or just having to sort of stand there and watch it. <laughs> and I think the commentators are trying to sort of level it up a little bit, but like, you know, physique is not Buddy Landell's uh, forte. No, he's one of the he's comments. oddly fat. <laughs> in, the, in that you look at him and he's not fat but you look at him and you go he's fat but the commentators are basically saying that that's the worst thing <laughs> Buddy Landell does a jaw lock at one point on Brian Pillman which is one of the single stupidest things I've ever seen in my life where he just cups his chin and then puts his hand on his own arm and even as a layman you'd look at that and just <laughs> go it's just cradling him yeah there's no <laughs> touching his chin where's, where's the pivot is it really painful to have your <laughs> chin gently touched you know it doesn't make any sense. I noticed as well in the audience there, there was someone, there was a security guard having a contretemps with a fan. And he looked like he was like flicking his finger, like he was going, give me it, give me it. And I was thinking, I wonder what that could be. And I, I think it can only have been a, a video camera. A video it could camera. have been a gun. That's very true. But this is about the time when people begin bringing video cameras. Right, okay. And I remember going to the first WWF event that I went to was at Wembley Arena. Yeah. And that would have been 1991, yeah. I think. And there were people there with video cameras. And I often think, oh, God, please find that tape. Let me see the first WWF show that I saw. Well, please let me see well, it. Like and that sort of thing, I, I do find a real connection to the things that I was at being able to see them. It's just, it, I don't know, it's a part of your own personal history, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, and things like that I think are, are really important. I can, I should imagine there are, you know, these odd little tapes lying out there somewhere. How exciting. <laughs> There's a story which I'll probably get slightly wrong, but there was a guy who basically, I think he won the lottery. Right. And he then set out to go, I'm going to live my dream, which is I'm going to track down in remote African countries the missing Doctor Who uh, oh, uh, yeah, reels yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that were sent out. We found the records that say they were sent out, yeah. and I am going out to find them. Now, I believe he did find some. I yes. also believe in the process he was shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that, and that rings a bell. Yeah. That, it was, yeah, last year, that story. Came, but, yeah. I mean, honestly, I could happily do that. <laughs> Just <laughs> searching out. Brian Pillman is one of those people as well who is a legitimate sports star. He was an NFL player. Yeah. And at this period, we're still in a period where everyone is all about the Superman wrestlers. Yeah. And Brian Pillman, for certainly this part of his career, he was portrayed as being a tiny little scrapper. He is a normal... <laughs> so I think now he'd be on the large side yeah. of wrestlers. You yeah. Know, you, Pillman was jacked. Yeah. You know, I don't think there's any uh, secret about the fact that he was certainly on the juice. Juicing! People Juicing like Buddy Mandel aren't cut and, you know, Know, looking in great shape as well because I think they were significantly poorer <laughs> than people in the yes, WWF yeah. and so they couldn't afford the really good quality steroids and yes. things so um, Brian Pillman is is just ripped and shredded uh, looks incredible he was one of the very very few quite sexy looking early 90s wrestlers yeah there was once a poster they gave away with WCW magazine they had a big fold out poster in the middle the first one was Sting like with a globe on his finger the second one would be Lex Luger with his tight championship belt yeah. About the fifth one, it was a picture got, of... Got a bit playgirl, did it? <laughs> Brian Pillman coming out of the shower <laughs> with a white towel around him that was pulled down to basically the top, of his, the top of his top of knob pubis. shaft. Yeah. yeah, right? And what it showed was he was a shaven home. And <laughs> I remember that poster coming out and going, I, I am going to break the habit of a lifetime here and That's I am going to put on my wall. up on my wall the reverse action shot <laughs> rather than the studio taken one. It is is at the time it was like what are they doing and i look back now and i go i wish someone had taken a photo of me looking that fucking unbelievably hot <laughs> <laughs> he is sexy he's staying on top of him but a man that was physically prepared mentally prepared and in shape that had him in the corner he should be on him he, buddy are you watching what i'm telling you he should be right on him here in the corner Look at that. Look at that nature boy. Look at it. Oh, I'm just savoring the day when we get him right where we want him.
match two, uh, Captain Mike Rotunda versus the Iron Sheik. Yep. Not, now, both of these not, guys... Not even got a sailor's hat this time, right? <laughs> oh, no. Mike Rotunda. The, the, he's been given a sports jacket, I, which uh, is look, charitable. Look, he's got the captain gimmick, OK? He did a video where he had a boat. He's wearing a captain's hat. There is an <laughs> anchor on his shorts. Oh, yeah, there is an anchor it, on his shorts. It is. Sorry, yeah. It is so nautical <laughs> that I was like, I'm invested in this character fully. Right? Um, he doesn't have nautical music. That's a shame. Yeah, no, um, he, he does do a rock time demonstration <laughs> in the uh, middle of his match. Doesn't he also? There's a match where he pushes Natalie Wood off the ring, <laughs> and um, she, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, but what you're seeing here, of course, is you're seeing two people who are better known from their WWF runs. Yes. So you're essentially seeing this match, the dream match of IRS versus the Iron Sheik stroke Colonel Mustafa. Uh, and in 1991, both of these men will be in WWE, by and large, stinking up the ring. <laughs> um, so he's IRS? He's IRS, yeah. This Did is, I know this? I, I think last you, time I was telling you... Did you mention you, that? And was, I just completely missed that. I think I'm drip-feeding it to you. Right. So I think I mentioned he was Bray Wyatt's dad. Yeah. But I, I have to keep little Easter eggs and nuggets that's back. that's IRS. Me. Otherwise, after we've seen all these people, it's going to be an episode of me going, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, the man walked over there and then the Irish whip followed. You know, got to keep these little treats wow. for you. Got to keep them. Well, yeah. what, what's in Iron Sheik's belly? <laughs> which, which wrestler's in there? Uh, the golden egg. The golden <laughs> <laughs> it's Iron Sheik he, he has got bi- the biggest beer belly. He does. Because you usually see that physique at the end of a wrestler's career rather than what looks like kind of in the middle. This yeah. In- he's certainly coming to the end of the run. Right. But, but he's got a WWE contract for two years just round the corner. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't sort of think this guy is definitely on the up. He's going to go to the number one place soon. Yeah. He looks like a big tortoise that's been pulled out of his shell. <laughs> and he's he does. <laughs> like, it seems like his little feet is flipping little feet sort of dangling off a wall <laughs> like Humpty Dumpty's big there is, belly there is something about him when I picture him I picture him with like withered legs <laughs> but he's this great big round egg with these legs that can't support him Humpty and actually, Dumpty when he moves around Iranian Humpty Dumpty so bowed his legs they're <laughs> properly bowed um, he moves in a way that is delightful because yeah. he's just a rolling sort of <laughs> like a toddler like a big Iranian toddler and, it, and it's like the way he waddles around and he's got like this I, I I've got like a weird inny outy belly button at the same time. And he looks like he's just, you know when babies have just been born and yeah. they've got a belly button that's out? It's basically, he looks like that. It looks like he's just, babies have got fat bellies. Yeah, that's, like where they, fat baby. that's where they pump in all of his mashed up rusk. <laughs> so he gets that lovely round, tight, drummy belly. <laughs> Sheik's incredible in this because he can't get off the floor when he's down. <laughs> and he has to, he properly has to crawl to the ropes like Andre and pull himself up the ropes. And he and he's, I, I, I was really impressed with him in this match. He's actually not awful. He's got so much yeah. experience that he's able to do quite a good match. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing. He's wearing, like, for the first time and only time in his career, he's got these pinky orange trunks on. And he just looks... I was thinking, you know, the pinky gold trunks, that's the sort of traditional thing in the South, that you'd wear pink trunks to get heat. Because right. people would think you were You're a gay. fairy. Right. Right. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, it's a bold move to sort of go... <laughs> I'm a big gay terrorist. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make everyone hate me, even the Southerners who don't mind the terrorists. Yeah, I'll get them with the trunks. I'm gonna let off a sex bomb. <laughs> <laughs> he's nailed from behind by the Iron Sheik, and the Sheik, who was a silver medal winner in the Mexico City Olympics for Iran, attacking the former Syracuse University All-American Mike Rotunda. But just as the bell sounded, Bob. And, and, and it's funny as well because they mentioned that he was a silver medalist at the Mexico Olympics. <laughs> Back in those days, you would hear that and you'd go, I have to take that as being... Uh, yeah. Was, why, it, would they, why would someone like Jim Ross <laughs> say it without having checked it? <laughs> now, you can check it. He didn't medal at Olympics. He didn't, he didn't, didn't go to an Olympics. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it, Pre-Google, you could say any old oh, shit. Yeah. And people would just have to sort of go, well, I suppose it could be. I mean, if he's saying it... Yeah, I mean, I mean, why would I mean, he say I mean, it otherwise? <laughs> Surely just, someone would be able to find out. make that up? It doesn't make any sense. I I'm a drill instructor in the US Marine Corps. <laughs> oh, no. Um, they had a nice nice end here. So Mike Rotunda with no gimmick as Captain Mike. He does a backslide mm. and he wins. And what you get here is another bit of WCW's clever booking, which is very much the way the, the modern world, I think, works now, where they say to you, you don't have to end a match by hitting a finisher. Yeah. A match can end at any time because of wrestling. Yeah. And so what you have here is you have a, a move which you've seen a million times. You've seen it again and again and again. You have probably never seen anyone actually get pinned by it and so they sort of go you have to be aware that a match can end at any time because a wrestler can win with countless moves yeah and wwe matches only ever really ended with finishes you know, yeah, and 
yeah, finishes. Yeah. And that was a sort of a nice Hot. bit that, that really keeps you in the match because you don't have to wait for that moment where yeah. you know it's going to end. Oh, this is, this is escalated, so this is probably going to end now. Yeah, modern times, that's changed slightly because finishes don't really end matches. Mm. You know, a match can end with any move. Mm. And I, I like to see that. I think it should happen more. I think mm. it's um, it would be hard to get over these days, but um, really worth doing. 